Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie Zidane. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and this next match is going to be Magman and 400 on Desert Needle Small, a map which is much more commonly used in 1v1 than the last one. Probably going to see a lot of vehicles. Magman going for light vehicles, 400 going for light vehicles. We are indeed seeing a lot of light vehicles. I think last time I casted this map, there was actually jump bots, and they went along the side here, jumped over this cliff. It's kind of neat. But no, this is more standard light vehicles on both sides. And darts coming up for scouting. Dart to Mason for Magman, and looks like that is the same thing for 400. Actually, a couple of darts for 400, then a Mason. And then Leveler, right away. They're expecting Magman to go for a rush. Scorcher rush. At least, as far as I can tell, they are. That, or they're just trying to play it safe. This is a fairly large map, but Scorchers are fast, and you could go for a Scorcher rush, trying to dive the commander to kill them. So a Leveler isn't a terrible idea. It's not necessarily relevant yet, although Magman is going for Scorchers, so we don't know. 400 might be onto something. I'm certainly going to trust their judgment at this point, because l there is a risk of Scorchers coming in. Now, they will need a couple levelers to really stop a Scorcher push, but yeah, that's not a bad idea. And it looks like Magman is not going to be focusing on Scorchers. Now, if they're getting a leveler themselves, they're worried about the same thing. Both players worried the other player is going to go for a Scorcher dive, which makes sense, because those are that's a really powerful strategy. If you can dive in with four Scorchers, you can hit their commander and kill it. And that's, at this stage in the game, about a third of their economy down the drain. So it's really powerful. It's just not something that either player is going to do, but both players are worried the other one is. The 400 still has some scouting around. They still have a couple... They still have a dart. Both Magman and 400 lost their first dart, but they still have a second dart they can use. Oh, sorry, their 400 has a second dart they can still use if they wanted to see, oh, is there going to actually be another a need for a leveler? And they're going to see, oh, wait, no. Magman's going for levelers. Magman's worried about the same thing I am. Okay, I guess I'll go for Ravagers then. Or, sla oh, yeah, Slashers, I guess. Slashers are kind of risky, though. Slashers aren't bad, but they are kind of risky. Like, Scorchers can easily get in and kill Slashers. And levelers, if used properly, aren't going to be that threatened by them. They come up, but it's it's not quite the straightforward thing. But it looks like Magman finally going for Scorchers, so both players going for Scorchers. They're just setting up defense just in case for the Scorcher rush. And then they're going to be setting up their own Scorcher rush, or Scorcher push. It's three minutes into the game, I wouldn't really call it a rush. But yeah, Scorcher push. That will probably work out okay, actually, because th there are only a couple levelers. It's really going to come down to Scorcher Micro. The levelers, if they're with the Scorchers, will make a difference. If they're not with the Scorchers, they'll die. I mean, Scorchers, it's like two Scorchers versus a leveler, the leveler might win. Three or more Scorchers versus a leveler, the Scorchers win. Unless you have multiple levelers, in which case the Scorchers all die, because they get one shot as a group. But yeah, at this point, it looks like 400 and Magman both just setting up levelers and scorchers. And then try to push in and hope for the best, basically. Hope they can mic out micro the other one's scorcher leveler group. Although, 400 moving much more forward. Trying, it looks like they're actually trying to claim the southeast side of the map. Magman, on the other hand, very content to maintain their own plateau, maintain their own area. And the dart. Oh, that's no, a leveler. 400's dart must have died a while ago. No, that was actually it. It just staked out the southeast or southwest expansion, which Magman is now taking, and it knows Magman's now taking it. Well, by extension, 400 knows that Magman's now taking it. The dart knows nothing. The dart is dead. But 400 knows, thanks to the dart's death, what Magman's up to. So at this point, 400's being much more aggressive. That's the big thing here. 400, they want this southeast side of the map. Well, south center, southeast side. There is a staked out Scorcher, which won't really do a whole lot of damage. At least if 400 scouts it out first and goes to it first. If 400 just sends their... Oh no, the Mason's going to go there first. That Scorcher's actually going to be really valuable then. Because that Scorcher's going to stop the Mason in his tracks. And looks like leveler win for Magman over to the west side of the map. Yeah, this Scorcher here... I don't know. Is 400 paying attention to it? No, 400's paying attention to their Scorchers, their own army. They're much more focused on attacking on their own. Their leveler just staked out, but they're not noticing the fact that they're gonna they're about to lose their worker. Although, on the other hand, Magman getting threatened, their commander about to die. Yes, it is gonna die! 
Magman's commander goes down, taking out both Magman and 400 Scorcher armies. Although that's inside of Magman's base, so there's a lot of economy there. And at the same time, the Scorcher here, getting rid of the Mason, there's nothing the Mason can do. It's trying to reclaim as best it can before it can die. It gets a tiny bit of energy. Not really that useful, but 400 does have an economic advantage. However, that doesn't matter, because losing the Mason's a big deal. There is another Mason nearby that is expanding, but losing that one Mason, that's a big problem. However, Magman losing the commander is similarly bad, especially given that 400 is going for map control. Like, 400 has been expanding very broadly. Magman's been trying to stop it, and a leveler going up to the Scorcher to take care of it, get rid of it. And 400 continuing to expand along the center of the map, like the side center, the east center, Whereas Magman not really taking the west center very quickly, and their commander down means that they're going to have a harder time pushing forward while expanding. I mean, not that that's really necessary to use the commander, and on a map this size, I don't know how common it is. It doesn't seem to be super common. 400's got their commander inside their base. It's not really making a difference. Also, 400 getting a gunship plant, while Magman, I don't see them focusing on building another factory. It looks like they're continuing to go for the light vehicles and light vehicles only. Which is a little annoying for them, I'm sure, because like they're stuck with the fact that they don't have a huge amount of economy. Like They lost 4 metal per second, 6 energy per second. Largely the energy is what they lost. And desperately building just now, getting to the point where they have as much energy as they did before the commander died. But yeah, that's gotta be annoying. I mean, seriously, the amount of damage that was dealt with the commander isn't as big as it may look, but it's still problematic. And Magman can't even reclaim it due to the lack of energy. And 400 onto the Ravager game, Magmen still sticking with levelers. 400 going Heavy Ravager, Heavy Banshee. So this is pure assault. Not even worrying about getting rid of anything around the sides, not worried about raiding, not worried about staking out positions too much. This entire game plan is just beat down the front door and win. That is the game plan, and thankfully for 400, they did guard one of the Masons with the leveler. They didn't let that stakeout get away with itself as much as last time. Although, on the other hand, the eastern side trying to find it will finally find that stakeout. Or rather, the staked out Scorcher. And at this point, 400 just taking the entire map. They have the, everything. Northwest, north, obviously the main base area. A lot of the center as well. And then now the southeast on top of that. 400 coming in with the leveler, sorry, Magman coming in with the leveler to try to stop the 400 coming in with their own levelers to try to stop the leveler from Magman coming in, but the Ravagers are being a pain. And the Banshees are coming in, which will help deal with that one leveler. Not to mention this leveler is walking into another leveler and will then die. So, overall, Magman is not expanding. Really, I don't know, where are Magman's Masons? Like, there's two of them? Three of them. And they're all inside that plateau, whereas 400 has their masons everywhere, and they have, well, the remainder, which is eight. They have eight masons going around. Oh, did... Yes, they are spotted. The Banshees have been spotted. Magmen aware that 400 went for air, but they are going for crashers. However, I don't know if it's too little too late. I feel like it is. The levelers won't be bad, but even then, there aren't a whole lot of levelers, so as bad as they won't be, it's not great. So 400 coming in with what'll possibly be the final push of these Banshees, just ripping everything apart. One Crasher up, two, actually two Crashers up already. But at the same time, that's 20 Banshees, well, right in here, 16 Banshees. The Crashers will be helpful, but they're gonna die very quickly. And even if they don't die very quickly, the Banshees will be able to tear apart most of this base. And it looks like the Banshees not even trying to deal with the Crashers, just staying out of the way, tearing apart all the metal extractors they can. Not even focusing on power plants, just going for the metal extractors, taking out all that metal, making that the bottleneck. Not the most recommended thing the worst in the worst case, but it's still a bit of a problem. And now, oh, that Stardust almost done. Not quite, though. One of the Banshee's bane is riot. Any riot attacks will usually kill Banshees because they get so clumped up and they are quite low to the ground. So Stardust, that's a big threat. But that got stopped. However, Magman for the counterattack over to the northwest. I mean, Magman's desperate. They've got to try to get rid of 400's economy. They've got to try to get rid of everything they can that 400 has. And more crashers are coming up. At this point, we have nine of them. That's quite threatening. The Banshees really can't go around willy-nilly anymore. However, at the same time, 11 Ravagers already on field. I mean, that's, that's probably enough to punch through these Lotuses. 
Definitely, I mean, it'll get rid of the crashes, obviously, because the crashes are anti-air. It won't matter. But if the crashes can get be gotten rid of, and actually, at this point, 400 probably realizes that Magman's moved all the crashes to the northwest. The Banshees might be able to just go around, I mean, if the crashes go to the northwest and get committed there, 400 can go around the, ban the crashers, take the Banshees over to the south side of the map, and tear apart what's left of Magman's base. I mean, this is some scary expansion coming up here. But at any rate, it is going to be pretty quick. Magman coming in, last ditch efforts. Crashers up front? On the front lines, really? Because 400 is going to be going around the back. They're going to be trying to hit through these the back door area. The Banshee is going to come around to the corner. Then over here. They're going to come around down here, over here. That's how things are going to go. I mean... Sure, if you want to throw the crashers out of the way and make them not a problem, but I don't think Magman wants to do that. Magman getting some rebuilt. They are getting some of their metal extractors rebuilt, but still, that slowed them down a ton. So, all things considered, 400 is pretty much on top. There's not much I can really think of that they've got that'll break them at this point. And, oh, Singularity Reactor, really? Okay, 400 just wants all the overdrive, apparently. Into a Strider Hub. I mean, why not? They've got 80 metal rushing in here. No, 90 metal. The commander accounts for... No, 17. Almost 100 metal going into the Strider. Whatever Strider gets built, that's 100 metal. 400 could go for a bloody silencer right now if they wanted to. Just fire a strategic nuke into 400's base. Why not? Sorry, into Magman's base, not into your own base. That would be silly. Why is this not building? There's a Strider Hub here that's doing nothing. 400... Like, seriously, 400's got some really good ideas. They know how to expand. They know how to set up. They're multitasking. That's a bit of a work in progress. I understand it's hard. But yeah. Anyway, I don't. what I don't understand is that when you build things like a Strider Hub, I'm pretty sure the Strider Hub can actually build, like, have this stuff queued as it's being built. So you don't actually have to focus on it and multitask at heart. I mean, a lot of 0K is built around making sure you don't have to multitask all that much. Like you have infinite build in factories, which 400 wasn't using, they are just building hundreds of units. And you have pre-queue on pretty much anything, like Strider Hub and such. Strider Hubs and workers and everything, they can be pre-queued in their actions. So it's not like you have to go back and actually pay attention very closely. Like, going back to the base to multitask isn't something you have to do the very minute that you need to get something built. Or the very second, not even a minute. Like, the, you don't need to do it the second you need something built, you can pre-queue loads of stuff. I guess that's the thing for 400. It's like, 400, you can use infinite build and otherwise pre-queue things. And if you need to worry about factories, put factories on a control group. And in general, I don't know if... I think 400's using control groups in this game. Maybe not, I don't know. Actually, I don't think so, come to think of it. Usually a control group is signified by selection of units constantly being the same ones. Like, there's, you're constantly seeing the same units selected. Or all the units of type being selected out of nowhere. Anyway, one Dante out, and second Dante just on the way. Where'd the first Dante go? Ah, there it is. So yeah, 400 with three Dantes coming in here. Magman basically given a chance to rebuild. I mean, it's not like Magman's been completely knocked down. 400 could have probably won this game before. But I think 400 really wants to make sure they win. Just make sure that Magman hasn't rebuilt to the point that there's a possibility of a loss. Get those three Dantes out. Set them up. And then, after they crash into Magman like a tsunami, then Magman will probably surrender. I think that's the idea. Although, on the other hand, there's also 21... There's 21 Banshees, 15 Ravagers, and more Ravagers where those came from. Actually, what's kind of weird is that 400 had 200 Ravagers queued, but only built like 15. So, I don't know what's going on there. I guess they might have been trying to pour all the other stuff. They're not using priorities either. Like, 400, if you want a tip, look into the stuff that 0k does for UI, like priority systems and queuing and 
I guess control groups aren't a zero case specific thing. I don't know if you use control groups, but definitely priority. If you want to stop construction or st cause construction of something to not block construction of other things, set it to low priority. Like, set that to a hockey if you have to. Just, well, like, yeah. Set that to a key if you need to. I have. And it's really handy. Just, you need something built, set it high priority. You need something to stop blocking other things from being built, set it to low priority. It's awesome. Repeat build on factories plus low priority is a great way of getting everything set up while still getting a decent amount of military units. Anyway, three Dantes moving in. This is the end. This is it. The Dantes will be finishing this up, and Magman now aware of the Dantes. I don't even know if Magman's going to stay in this game at this point. They might just surrender. And... Yeah, that's game. And Skazi's asking if you can set rally points for Strider Hubs. You can't, I don't think, but what you can do, as far as I'm aware, is set pre queued commands for the units themselves. I mean, you might be able to set a rally point for Strider Hub, but most factories, the rally points are really just orders. They're not rally points as a separate class of thing. Like, it's not a separate class of target. But you can, as far as I know, pre-queue actions to the units being built. So the Strider has to start construction, but afterwards you can just tell it, move this way. But yeah, I don't think there's a way of telling the Strider Hub to tell all Striders that it builds to go to a particular location. I could be wrong, though. I don't use Strider Hub all that often. It's not, an, it's not a common thing in 1v1. Anyway, much less excess from, from 400 this time. Like, half the excess is last game, but... Magman with 9,000 excess. Wow, that's a lot of excess. Really, it's just energy income was so low. Oh yeah, that's energy income, not energy total. Energy income with 329 with a bloody singularity reactor. 400 was just playing with Magman by the end there. I mean, singularity reactor in 1v1, you only do that when you know you've won and are just toying with your opponent. I mean, seriously, 400 was being like a cat. Just toying with its food. Anyway, next game is going to be between Magman and Kshatra, giving 400 a break. Well, it means a replay, so you know what I mean. But still, Magman and Kshatra on Living Lands, which will be up in a few minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs>